Introduction There is purpose in just thinking. Not multitasking or trying to brainstorm an idea while waiting to pick up your lunch, but dedicating time to sitting and pondering. We shouldn't designate thinking time to only gaps in our schedules, such as daily commutes. The point is not just more thinking, but better thinking. And this means no multitasking. Instead, we should establish a thinking place and a routine to follow. If we have good ideas, we need to dedicate time to shaping them and creating an action plan. Being a good thinker isn't restricted by job, education, or background. There's not a certain degree or course of study required to become a better thinker. Engagement in the process and the discipline to change are the key factors needed, although finding a comfy, quiet place surrounded by inspiration can help move the process along. To bring more thinking into your life and become a better thinker, follow these five pointers. 1. Find sources of inspiration and knowledge. Read articles relevant to your industry and find work you admire. While doing your own work, keep these inspirational sources in the front of your mind or physically in front of you for extra motivation. 2. Surround yourself with good thinkers. Talk to your friends who have a thought process you admire or who excel in their industries. 3. Actively choose good thoughts. Set aside and prioritize time specifically for thinking through problems or ideas. 4. Take action. Develop a sense of urgency about putting your ideas into action. 5. Listen to your gut responses. Monitor how you feel when things are going well. In How Successful People Think, John C. Maxwell not only covers the importance of deliberate thinking, but also identifies 11 different types of thinking and how you can incorporate them in your journey towards successful thinking. This snapshot dives into the details of eight of those key methods. Cultivate Big Picture Thinking Big Picture Thinking is exactly what you think it is. You understand the greater scenario while simultaneously breaking it down and gaining perspective from the individual parts. In other words, it's seeing both the forest and the trees and understanding that there are lessons in everything. Big Picture Thinking requires a change in both mindset and methods. To get in the right mindset, think of yourself as an eternal student who's always learning and widen your focus to open yourself up to new ideas. When it comes to methods, listen more than you talk and actively identify learning opportunities in every experience or conversation. Big picture thinkers understand that being open to new experiences is essential. Do you prefer absolute silence during your Uber rides? Instead, try talking to your next driver. Do you turn down the opportunity to go rock climbing because you think you won't be good at it? In that case, Rock climbing is exactly what you should do on your next day off. Humans are conditioned to become uneasy about the unknown. It's a survival instinct to run away from feelings of discomfort. However, to succeed at your goals, you should always embrace the unknown as having potential. Engage in focused thinking. When was the last time you had two hours to yourself with nothing to do but mull over an idea? If your response is never or not for a very long time, then you're like most people. Focused thinking involves putting your blinders on and blocking out all outside distractions so you can hone your attention to your thinking process. With focused thinking, you put one goal or task above all others. Narrowing your focus allows the idea to incubate, which is necessary for staying on target and potentially expanding your idea once the basics are in place. For example, if you hope to open your own business, an important first step would be establishing a business plan and purpose before you start looking for a storefront or hiring employees. Start by prioritizing your ideas. Think about your strengths and weaknesses and assess your talents. Knowing these traits will help you move toward the right ideas and goals. Once you have your ideas, block out time specifically for thinking. Also, specify exactly what you'll do during that time. Now it's time to engage in focused thinking. This is when the mental blinders come into play. To get in the groove, remove all distracting temptations. Leave your phone in another room and install a website blocker to avoid online rabbit holes. Put visuals in front of you like a to-do list or the specific paperwork you need to complete. Focusing this intensely may sound unattainable, especially since we all carry smartphones that can interfere with ideas before they have a chance to grow. Whether they're for work or play, email, social media applications, and addictive games make it difficult to focus but you don't necessarily need a sensory deprivation tank or a blank room to make focused thinking happen. Employ realistic thinking. When you think of a realist, you probably think of a character who's the voice of reason. Realists are often portrayed as the wise best friend, 
the coach who gives tough love, or the mentor trying to guide the hero through unfamiliar territory. They're practical and like to see proof before accepting or believing in something. Sometimes they can even be a bit stubborn. Realistic thinking is something like the scientific method. Steps are defined, there's a control group, and the goal is to build a baseline process or idea that can be replicated. This type of thinking helps identify attainable goals and defines the steps or milestones needed to reach those goals. Realistic thinking is all about assessing and minimizing risk, knowing where things can go awry, and identifying backup plans, just in case. Thinking realistically doesn't have to be boring. In fact, a baseline plan can provide a jumping-off point for creativity. Returning to the example of running your own small business, realistic thinking helps you identify the amount of work you'll need to do or the number of products you'll need to sell to pay all your expenses and turn a small profit. From there, you can determine where to make room for more creative projects. Additionally, it's important to note that realistic thinking is not pessimistic. Preparing for things to go wrong doesn't mean you're convinced that disaster is the only outcome. Instead, acknowledging where things could go wrong and taking steps to prevent it will help you succeed in the long run. Overall, realistic thinking emphasizes focusing on the facts and recognizing the pros and cons in everything while having a backup plan or escape plan just in case the worst happens. Utilize strategic thinking. Some people naturally love planning and outlining details. Think about the talents of project managers, event planners, and marketing professionals. All these roles involve anticipating needs or direction changes and making sure everyone involved is ready to adjust. Many people in these positions are strategic thinkers. They anticipate needs, prepare for difficulty, have several plans ready, and embrace uncertainty. There's always a chance that it will rain on a bride's dream wedding day, or that a project will receive negative feedback and must pivot to get back on track. Customizing their planning with flexible processes instead of rigid structure allows these thinkers to embrace uncertainty. If you find it difficult to plan, you may not understand strategic thinking. Is it magic? Delusional confidence? No. Strategic thinkers define objectives up front, break problems or goals into smaller pieces, and divide and conquer. Strategic thinkers also continually seek more information and clarity, as information is power when it comes to being flexible and embracing many possible outcomes. Learn from reflective thinking. In our fast-paced lives, it may seem impossible to slow down and reflect on the past, but that is exactly what's behind reflective thinking. This type of thinking prioritizes analyzing past events or ideas from projects that have already wrapped up. How is it possible to innovate for the future if you're focusing on what's already happened? By taking the time to think about what you've already accomplished and why you succeeded or failed, you gain an improved perspective on the deeper meanings of experiences and how you responded to them. This enables you to engage in better decision-making and have more confidence in the big picture. Many thinking methods discussed in the book involve widening your horizons and treating every opportunity as a potential learning experience. And the same can be said for thinking about past events. Whether something succeeded or failed, you can add that experience to your portfolio and learn from it. Reflective thinking can be applied in many areas of your life and incorporated into your regular workflow. For example, you could schedule reflective thinking at the end of a big project, or you could schedule time for it at regular intervals during a long-term project. At meetings that are often humorously referred to as post-mortems, a team sits down at the end of a project to have an open conversation about the good, the bad, and the ugly. You can also block out the time for your own reflective thinking. During this time, ask yourself a series of questions and answer honestly. Examples of self-reflective questions include, How did I make a positive impact today? How could I improve? Did I lead well today? How did my team respond? What do I need to spend more time on? Then, write an analysis on how you plan to change your actions in the future. Question Popular Thinking While reading about the different ways of thinking, you may have some doubts about how each method applies to you. You may think, I won't find any benefit in that, so it's not worth my time. This is an example of popular thinking, using conventional thoughts against yourself. Time is a popular excuse for not prioritizing thinking. You just don't have time. Popular thinking isn't particularly helpful and can impede progress. And this is precisely why you should question it. When you start to break it down, this type of thinking is designed to be mindless as it removes the need for active decision making. Instead, you simply rely on popular opinion or thought by taking away decisions, popular thinking encourages only average outcomes. 
This is why our standards for measuring the success of outcomes are rooted in the most common expectations instead of what's actually possible. In addition, popular thinking doesn't suit change. The status quo changes at a snail's pace because change is often viewed as disruption. In itself, questioning popular thinking is an act of rebellion. If you want to change standards and expand possibilities, it's essential to think for yourself. Don't go along with what others are doing. Instead, question why things are the way they are. Explanations such as, that's the way it's always been done, or the dreaded, because I said so, do not justify aversion to change. Even your own ideas are not exempt. You should question yourself, too. Think for yourself by exploring new methods, embracing discomfort, and appreciating other innovative thinkers. Benefit from Shared Thinking Teamwork makes the dream work, and this includes team thinking. While many thinking methods are designed as solo activities, shared thinking is essential for any collaborative effort, where you work with others while expanding your own understanding of your ideas. You may associate group projects with bad experiences you had in school, or you may just prefer flying solo. If this is the case, it can be tricky to open yourself to shared thinking, but shared thinking inevitably makes your ideas stronger, and it's the only way to gauge whether your ideas benefit the greater good or just yourself. Aim to work with people who have experience in arenas you're unfamiliar with. Listening to them provides invaluable knowledge that can transform your ideas in surprising ways. This process will also strengthen your relationships, increase innovation by adding many perspectives, and divide the work for better efficiency. Practice unselfish thinking. You don't need to be a saint to practice unselfish thinking. Shared thinking emphasizes using the perspectives of others to improve your ideas. Unselfish thinking takes this to another level by prioritizing others' perspectives and goals in your process. Starting your own unselfish thinking process requires these essential steps. 1. Put others before you. Prioritize looking out for the interests of others before thinking of your own stake in a situation. 2. Build awareness of needs. Discover what needs there are in your area of expertise beyond what you're already aware of. Three. Give without expecting reward. Give without expecting any acknowledgement or reward in return, such as by making an anonymous donation. 4. Invest beyond yourself. Give for the sake of enriching someone else's well-being or development. 5. Evaluate your motives. Check in regularly to make sure you're thinking like a giver and not expecting something in return. In addition to helping someone else, unselfish thinking yields benefits for you. And appreciating this doesn't make you selfish. Helping others increases your sense of personal fulfillment, especially when you're able to perform a service or provide a perspective someone else can't provide. It can also lead to a positive domino effect. You are more motivated to help others, and those witnessing your actions are inspired to do the same. Engaging in this process inevitably leads you to incorporate even wider impacts into your ideas and goals instead of focusing only on yourself. Conclusion in this snapshot, you've learned not only the importance of setting aside time exclusively for thinking, but also the different types of thinking that can help you in problem-solving, goal-setting, and many other areas of life. Remember, the fundamental keys to better thinking are engagement in the process and the discipline to change. In addition, try to surround yourself with sources of inspiration as well as other good thinkers. Actively choose good thoughts and prioritize those ideas as the ones to pursue and put into action. The book offers many examples of how to think big and expand your thinking based on your work and previous life experiences. The ideal scenario is to use a healthy mix of all the different types of thinking. While this may seem to be a daunting task, it's a goal to work toward as you learn to prioritize time for careful thought and become a more successful thinker. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of How Successful People Think by John C. Maxwell. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.